welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. Today we're going to be working with the Empress Shell Sticks Light Bow Gun. This Light Bow Gun excels with using Slice Ammo, Pierce Ammo Level 2, Thunder Ammo, and Water Ammo. It has competition with the Devil's Madness for Slice and the Terrath Blitz Pierce for Pierce Ammo builds. So we're going to go over all that. We're going to talk about the base stats of the weapon. We're going to talk about the builds I've put together, and I've really worked pretty hard on the builds this time. I was really trying to optimize it. And then at the end of the video, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about combat, and I'm going to be giving the weapon a tier rating like I always do. Alright, so let's begin with comparing the base stats of the Emperor Shell Sticks with the base stats of Terrath Blitz Pierce, its main competitor. You can see that they have a slightly different attack value. Shell Sticks is a little lower at 247, Terrath Blitz Pierce is 260. However, Emperor Shell Sticks comes with 10% base affinity. Also, you'll notice it has an extra small decoration slot, and really you're going to be putting something like an expert decoration in there, or your fourth attack decoration in there. So what you're talking about is another 5% affinity. So there's kind of a 15% affinity difference between these two guns in favor of Emperor Shell Sticks. However, Terrath Blitz Pierce gets about 13 more attacks, so they're actually very close to each other in that regard. Since both guns are also rarity 8, that means they both have one augmentation slot. And by the way, if you're curious how to augment this weapon, you really ought to go with affinity increase. Health regen is really not going to help you with slice ammo or pierce ammo on either bowgun so yeah definitely just go affinity increase affinity increase also affects the elemental ammo a lot uh, because you're really trying to build affinity for the crit element right but the way empress shell sticks really stands out is definitely with the spare shot skill you'll notice it just default comes with the skill and this is a difficult skill to build you need three parts of the zenajiva set and the zenajiva set is not actually very uh, you know, efficient with decoration slots. So because Emperor Shell Sticks begins with Spare Shot, you can actually build a lot more on this bowgun, and that's really what sets it apart. It's also in very close competition with, with the Devil's Madness light bowgun for slice ammo. So Devil's Madness is forced to build three parts of the Zenajiva armor set in order to get decent damage on its slice ammo. The big difference is Devil's Madness, and by the way, if you're more curious about that weapon, I have a guide for it already. I'll leave a link in the description. Basically, it's very high raw, and it's got very negative affinity, but it's very high raw, kind of carries it in terms of damage with the slice ammo. So Devil Joe's much higher base attack really helps it get the damage it needs on the slice ammo. In my opinion, it kind of evens out a little bit, except Devil Joe has slightly stronger uh, Wyvern Blast, whereas Emperor Shell Sticks is able to build Part Breaker. That's, that's kind of where the two deviate from each other, and I feel like you could go either or. It just depends on what you want. Okay, but that's talking about Devil's Madness and Emperor Shell Sticks in terms of slice ammo. Let's get back to talking about Terrath Blitz Pierce and Emperor Shell Sticks in terms of Pierce ammo. You'll notice when we take a look at their ammo types, they're actually very similar. And one of the interesting things actually with Emperor Shell Sticks, you'll notice it has Recovery 1 and Recovery 2. It doesn't have a lot of recoil on those, so if you really wanted to have a bowgun where you heal your teammates, this is actually a pretty good choice. And then there's one major difference, you'll notice Emperor Shell Sticks, it has Sleep Level 1 and Sleep Level 2, whereas Terrath Blitz Pierce has Paralysis Level 1 and Poison Level 2. In my opinion, Emperor Shell Sticks is actually a little better. I think Normally I would say Paralysis is a better status ailment, but in this case with Emperor Shell Sticks, you're probably going to get two procs of putting the monster to sleep with that setup, whereas getting a proc of Poison isn't really meaningful, and Paralysis Level 1 will take a long time to proc anyways. So I really feel like the Sleep Ammo on Emperor Shell Sticks is a little better. The other thing you'll notice is that they both hold five shots of Pierce Ammo, and their reload and their recoil for that ammo type is pretty much identical. Other than that, Emperor Shell Sticks is able to use a water build, whereas Terrath Blitz Pierce can only do a thunder. And in both cases, both of these guns will do a terrific job against Kolv Terroth. Kolv Terroth is very weak to thunder ammo, and both of these bow guns have very powerful thunder ammo builds. I never did. Okay, and now that we're done talking about the base attributes of the weapon, we're going to move on to talking about the different builds that I put together. I always kind of start with the build with no decorations for people who are kind of newer to the game, newer to high rank, and you want a, uh, you want a competent build, but you don't have all the decorations. So here it is with no decorations and the decoration slots. You can add them in however you want. Notice that this is a level 2 pierce ammo build. And for the mods, we went one recoil suppressor and two ranged attack mods. Okay, those ranged attack up mods are really useful. As for the skills, I get two levels of free element, that's going to give me an extra shot in the clip, two levels of crit boost, two levels of weakness exploit, two levels of max might, and the piercing shot skill, which we're getting from Wrath Soul Coil Alpha. Alright, and now that we're done with the no decorations build, let's move on to talking about the optimized pierce ammo build. 
is going to be the same deal with the mods. One recoil suppressor, two ranged attack up. And when we look at the skills, there's kind of a lot going on here, so let's kind of break it down. Piercing Shots is on the build, of course. I do that with the decoration this time. Of course, Spare Shot is on the build already. That comes from the gun. And then mostly what you're trying to do here is maximize your Static Affinity. Static Affinity is Affinity where it doesn't matter where it hits it on the monster's body. It's always going to have a chance of, of causing a crit. And that's different from Weak Spot Affinity. Weak Spot Affinity is what you get with the Weakness Exploit skill. You'll notice I only took Weakness Exploit to level 2. Normally I take it to level 3 because the third level of Weakness Exploit is really efficient, gives you a big boost to uh, to your affinity. However, in this case, I only need to get affinity to about 100%, and I'm focusing on getting static affinity onto the build. So in this case, crit eye is really more important to me, attack boost is really more important to me, and so is maximum might. So I don't really sacrifice any of those skills to get weakness exploit any higher, and in the end, the build actually worked out really well. Because I have 65 affinity, and weakness exploit when it procs will give me an additional 30% affinity. So when the bullet's traveling through the monster's body, I'm gonna get a nice 65% static affinity. That's a pretty good amount. And then if it's hitting a weak spot on the monster, it's gonna go all the way up to 95. So that's really, really good. And I still managed to get four levels of attack boost and three levels of peak performance onto the build in order to get a little more damage in each shot. Okay, and now that we're done talking about the optimized pierce build, I want to show you kind of an optimized slice build. Now, here's the deal. I actually spent a lot of time with this ammo type, and I've been using it for a long time. I've been using all the bow guns for a long time at this point, let's be honest. But the point is, I was really trying to get a really optimized build on the slice ammo, and it's difficult. One of the things I really noticed is that the attack boost skill and the peak performance skill just really don't affect the damage it does. Your base attack seems to play a big role, but when you add those other ones on, you know, it kind of reminds me of like the sticky ammo. Uh, sticky ammo isn't really affected by anything except for artillery. You know, you can raise your sticky ammo damage by a little bit, but it's kind of like meaningless, but artillery raises it by a lot. Well, it feels like slice ammo kind of plays by those rules as well, and I don't I don't really know what to do about it. So what I've, I've done is I've actually given up on building the attack boost skill and the peak performance skill. And instead, I've gone ahead and built Part Breaker, and what I've done is I've maxed my affinity because that's really important. At least Crit Boost and Affinity are, are playing a role in raising the damage of the ammo type. And then after that, that's about all you can do. Also, of course, we get ammo up level 3 so that we can hold an extra shot in the clip. That means you reload less throughout the fight. That means you shoot more. That's, of course, another way to get your DPS up, right? Sustained DPS. But other than that, there's not a whole lot we can do. And that's why Devil's Madness is really kind of able to compete with this weapon, even with this horrible negative affinity. And even though you have to build three pieces of the, you know, Zenajiva set in order to use it, on Devil's Madness and kind of compete with it. It's kind of interesting. I found that Devil's Madness wouldn't get as many crit shots on the monster when he was using the slicing ammo, but the damage was so much higher that kind of evened out to be about the same amount. So uh, once again, the big difference was Devil's Madness, it had more damage on the Wyvern Blast, but Emperor Shell Sticks, you could actually build Part Breaker and get away with having Part Breaker on the build, which kind of makes sense for slice ammo. So if you want maybe, maybe the best slice ammo build, I think you could make a fair argument that Emperor Shell Sticks is the best slice ammo build for light bow guns. A one more note on the slice ammo build, notice I go with two reload assist mods and one recoil suppressor mod. Moving right along, we have to talk about the elemental ammo types. We have water and thunder, and they're both rapid fire, which is good. Basically, when you have a rapid fire ammo on a bow gun, it literally just translates to more damage. That's all it means, right? It's a little trickier to use, but you get more damage in the end. And especially for the elemental ammo types, I feel like that's really badly needed. So the fact that we've got free spare shot skill on this build means that you don't have to have the three pieces of the Zenashiva Divinity set. You're going to have a larger clip than average because of the chance to get a free shot, right? You're going to have a larger clip than other elemental ammo types. And again, this is kind of how it competes with the Pierce, right? The uh, Terrath Blitz Pierce. It has Thunder ammo as well. But this one, this one has the spare shot skill, and that's a big deal, right? So... What I have going on here is crit eye to six, attack boost four, water attack three. You don't want to go any higher than three. That's wasteful. Uh, you could go down to two. You would lose a little bit of damage. I don't really know why you would do that. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, three levels of free element, three levels of ammo up, three levels max might, weakness exploit two. You only need two levels of weakness exploit two in this case. Once again, similar to the pierce build, this is an ammo type that travels through the monster's body, so it won't always be touching a weak spot. So it's better to have static affinity rather than weak spot affinity. 
And because of that reason, I focused all of my points into Max Might and Crit Eye, and then did Weakness Exploit last. As it turned out, I only needed two levels of Weakness Exploit, and that worked very well with the Rathalos male beta. You also notice, kind of strangely, a lot of builds, I think, use the Rathalos Soul Helm, and I'm using just the regular Rathalos Helm in order to get more attack on the build. That's because after tons and tons of experimenting with Crit Boost, I just concluded Crit Boost adds, like, no damage. To these elemental ammo builds however attack boost does so i went with the attack boost i would have liked to have peak performance on the build and maybe you can find a way to make that work if you want to or give something else up i don't know or maybe some new armor will come out with the uh, behemoth when he comes out we'll have to see but yeah this is what i'm going with for my elemental ammo builds if you wanted to change this from a water ammo build over to a thunder ammo build, it's very simple. Just trade out the three decorations, the stream jewels, out for bolt jewels. Very simple, it just swaps right over, okay? So you can almost just call this the elemental ammo type build for this gun. All right, now that we're done talking about the builds, I think what I'm gonna be doing more often in these videos is really talking about what monsters you should be using this weapon on, and really the biggest monster of all, and I already made a video for this because it's such a big deal, you should be using this weapon against Kulv Teroth. But there are other monsters you might consider using this build against as well. Uh, for example, I did a guide recently on fighting Arch-Tempered Valhazak with light bowguns, and using the slice ammo build on this bowgun was one of the setups that I went with. That's because the slice ammo is very easy to use, and arch-tempered Valhazak is very difficult to fight. So you get to put more of your attention into just staying alive, because the ammo type is so easy to use, you don't really have to put yourself into too many risky situations. And I suppose you could say the same thing's true if you wanted to bring it against arch-tempered Kirin, okay? So you could very definitely use this against arch-tempered Kirin. Next, I want to point out that Kushala de Aura is weak to thunder, Teostra is weak to water, Nergigante is weak to thunder, but I've used it against him and it really doesn't feel that strong. Uragon is weak to water, and actually I feel like it does a terrific job against Uragon. Kind of similar to Lava Seath. So Lava Seath is weak to water, especially when it's not hardened, when it comes out of the water. But even when Lava Seath has hardened, it's still one of the best elements to use against him. And he's nobody's favorite monster, I'm sure of it. I rarely see him get posted. But yeah, if you're having trouble with him, try using water ammo on him. Then you have Devil Joe, he's weak to Thunder. Uh, Devil Joe has kind of a thinner body in my opinion, so he's kind of harder to use Thunder ammo against, but I've seen people do it successfully. I just don't think I'd do it myself. Actually, I think I'd probably use the Slice ammo on him and just stay far, far away from him. Then we have Bazookuse. Bazookuse is weak to Thunder and he gets absolutely destroyed by Thunder ammo. He also gets destroyed by Pierce ammo, so feel free to use either build on him. After that, Dodogama is weak to thunder, Legiana is weak to thunder, and that looks like it's it. The rest of these monsters, well, Anjanath is weak to water, and I guess that's worth mentioning as well, but the rest of these monsters, you know, they're such pushovers, you really don't need to worry about what they're weak against at that point. You're mostly worried about threat level 2 and Elder Dragons, right, and Arch-Tempered Elder Dragons as well. All right, and that pretty much concludes which monsters I would use this weapon against. I mean, when it comes to like the slice ammo, you can use that against most monsters. With the pierce ammo, focus on long monsters like Urgon, Basil Goose, Diablos, Black Diablos. I would say that, right? And then we talked specifically about the elemental ammo types just a second ago. All we have left is to talk about the tier rating for this light bowgun. So it's not a mistake that I'm doing another guide for it. I'm doing like a revamped guide for it. It's one of the best light bowguns in the game right now. And that's because of its slice build, pierce ammo 2 build, and because of his elemental ammo type builds. And if we're talking about thunder ammo, we really have to say that this weapon comes more into S tier because of the fight against Kulv Taroth. S tier for fighting Kulv Taroth, a tier for fighting everything else. Like many of the other light bow guns, it struggles to do any incredible amount of damage, you know, like world record breaking speed runs. However, it's very easy to use, it's very safe to use, and I think that's one of the things that light bow guns really do best. They're, they have a very high usability. All right, and that's everything I have to say about Emperor Shell Sticks. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.